Welcome to the Jim Woods Podcast. I'm Ryan George. <laughs> I'm Justin Guild, a.k.a. Jeff Sonic. <laughs> and I'm Tony Marinucci, a.k.a. Tips of Tony, a registered dietitian. And we are the Jim Woods. <laughs> As you guys could probably tell right off the bat, we're a little delirious today. A little bit. This is we, we, I, I'm going away for a while, as you've probably heard me mention on many up many episodes leading up. Uh, not for a long while. I'm going away for six weeks. Um, but we needed to record a bunch of episodes in order to to make sure that we had stuff lined up for you guys. And that combined with just randomly scheduling a bunch of people on the same day and Tony coming in, we ended up doing like five episodes in a row. And we're at the end of those five episodes. Um, and we're going on the six and a half. We're hour running on mark. fumes. Like I mean, we've, we've talked about the weather like multiple times. We've complained about cruise ships. We've talked about oh, complaining about cruise ships. social media stuff. Problem. So I, I don't know what to do. Um, at, 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 I don't know what to say at this point. Oh, you know what oh. I do? I have an observation. Yes. Like I've been snacking all day because we've been doing this for six hours, but you guys haven't eaten anything. Are you I actually hungry? did. I went into oh. the other room. I had a few nuts <laughs> and a, uh, an orange. Oh, okay. So and a half behind a closed doors, which yeah. we should definitely. Oh, we've got plenty do. of coffee, though. Well, we've had way, yeah. uh, way too much coffee, but it's necessary. And I've got to work out, so I, I usually try not to eat within a few hours of working That's out. True. My, I, I feel okay, but just an observation. Yeah, and I ate a lot this morning, so good. Nice, nice. I'm good. But actually, I haven't had any water. That's I think more oh, yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. Is I've got, I haven't oh, had yeah. water. Yeah, and it's very hot in here. As you guys know, we talk about all the time. Yeah. We can't yeah, Justin, AC, you, so. we, we, we need to like start like a Patreon or something so that people can buy us a, 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 a studio. We'll rename the we'll name the podcast after you if you if you buy us uh, soundproofing so we don't get to hear the, the lovely sounds of New York traffic. And a quiet air conditioning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to have some sort of really at, at a lot of studios they turn off the AC unless you have some really fancy uh, central AC that's right. sort of regulating yeah. the. Air so, yeah. Yeah. So we suffer to bring you. This it's oh quality God, content. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> right, anyway, um, yeah, let's get let's just get right to it. Um, Today we so. have uh, Jen Zerling and George Veter. They have a very cool podcast called the Fit Because. Yep. So we have an interview with them. Uh, we get to, depending on how Justin edits this, we get to watch Justin struggle with the word kinesiology, which yeah, yeah, is always it. fun. Um, it was hilarious, but I, I don't know how many takes you're going to allow. I think he'll probably just do the one. <laughs> you should one. just do, now that I'm I've set you, it, now that I've set it up, he, we should just let him outtakes. do the whole thing. Um, <laughs> include the outtakes and all. All right. But anyway, again, um, welcome to... Welcome to <laughs> enjoy the delirious. podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the delirious fit Jim Wits podcast. Uh, without further ado, here are Jen and George. George, you're looking pretty good over there. Oh, um, can you see me? I can yeah. see you. Oh, wow, it's like a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually in, in in one of my conference rooms in my office today, so I'm just in between appointments. Perfect. I love it. Cool, cool. So, yeah, yeah we, George we, is a very busy man, so it's an honor that we get to have him at this awesome. time. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Awesome. All right. Hey, everyone. We are here with Jen Zerling and George Veter. Hey, guys. How's everything? Great. How are you, Ryan? I'm good. 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 So you are, um, once again, speaking with, uh, with Ryan. I'm Justin, and this is to, uh, Tony. Tony is the, uh, the, the registered dietitian of the bunch. Ryan is the fitness pro, and I am the enthusiast that, that mooch off of everyone else's uh, knowledge. He gets all the free <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Three people in the studio? Yep. Yes, yes. Nice. I think this is the most you've ever had on a podcast. Yeah, yeah. I think five is it. This is, the, this is, this is our, like our biggest podcast. Show. Yeah. Love this it. is amazing. All right, so Jen is a master in kinesi... Kine- <laughs> Yeah, he got that. Kinesiology. Kinesiology. <laughs> you know who's not the fitness expert uh, in this group? I see that. <laughs> she uh, she is uh, she is uh, author and a fitness and age management expert. Uh, George is a six time saddle bronc rider champion. I'm going to definitely ask you about that because it sounds very interesting. And an entrepreneur as well. And they are the hosts of the. Fit Because podcast. 
So guys, welcome to the Gym Wits. So, so we so, always ask our first uh, question for, for anyone on the show. We kind of want to get a little bit, um, and maybe we'll get some uh, background on, on George, um, about your own personal kind of fitness history or fitness origin story. Like, what you, you know, how did you get into the world? Um, you know, did you play sports growing up? Uh, and also like kind of what you're currently doing. So we'd love to hear from each of you guys like where, where you're at right now. Sweet. Jen, you first. Oh, you're such a gentleman, George. Thank <laughs> you. So, uh, my father's an athlete, and he got us into sports at a very young age. And he was very hard on us, and just didn't settle for, you know, us kind of grazing in the grass, as he would say. He would tell us to hustle. Everything was a hustle. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm from New York, so you could tell with uh, you know the energy, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But I ended up playing sports my whole life as a result of that. And then when I went off to college, I ended up being recruited for my first personal training position at Bally Total Fitness. And um, it was funny because back then my mom was like, you want a certification? How much is that going to cost me? <laughs> so I had to get my first cert. And you know, fast forward, I ended up getting multiple certifications, ended up going back for my master's degree in kinesiology. <laughs> 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 and uh, you know, did it, my master's thesis in obesity management for children. So I ended up transitioning out of the health club industry and more into medical weight loss and age management medicine, working with some of the best physicians Um, teaching people how to age well, and of course, um, you know, taking my fitness, also channeling some of my expertise into nutrition and just very basic sciences on how people can, you know, take good care of themselves and really maximize their potential as they get older. So that brings us to where I'm at now. And I just had a baby eight weeks ago. So right now I'm just teaching all the women out there to stay fit no matter, uh, you know, where you're at in your journey. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, George, you're up. My turn. Okay, well, I... Uh, Actually, I have kind of been in sports my whole life. In um, grade school and high school, I wrestled and played football and then started competing in rodeos when I was 11 as a little kid. So in the world of rodeo, you start in junior rodeos, then there's a high school rodeo association, then there's collegiate rodeo, an amateur professional, and then there's a master of seniors tour, actually. So runs the full gamut. Wow. And um, I've just always loved competition. I've loved using my body and pushing myself. Um, when I was in high school, I was little. I'm five foot seven. I weigh 165 pounds. <clears throat> and uh, I loved the pop of defensive play. I was outside linebacker, and I was a defensive player of the year and team captain. And for a little guy, I um, I let my uh, one of my, my one of my coaches used to introduce me as pound for pound the toughest football player that he ever coached, which always used to make me feel good. But I I loved sports from the beginning and started training lifting weights and training um, in high school, essentially. And then I've just never quit. Um, I, in competing in professional rodeo, I've been a Canadian champion twice, a uh, world champion twice. Um, I was the state champion in California for the last time in 2015 at age 52, which I, I was um, double the age of any of the other competitors that I uh, was rodeoing with. And I um, have always focused on keeping fit in association with rodeo. I also dabbled into bodybuilding a few years back in my late 30s. I um, did a natural show out in Monterey, California and and won my class um, as a lightweight. Then I did another one in the Bay Area in Hayward the next year, and it was a much bigger show. I won second, um, but felt like I was in the best shape then. And then I did a huge show, um, muscle mania, which international competition, just kind of to go into that world and learn how to, uh, learn more about my body and how it works and how nutrition works and how it could manipulate and get results. And so that was a great education for me as well. And so today I continue to train, continue to ride, do the things I've always been able to do since I was a kid at the same level. Um, because of my commitment to training. So I'm very passionate about this subject. 
Well, thank you, George, for making us feel so good about our own athletic accomplishments. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, that's curious. Like, I'm curious. I don't know if I'm totally jumping all these questions right now, but I, you mentioned about like fitness and aging well, and it seems to like obviously at your age you're able to compete at people's, you know, who are at, with eight people who are significantly younger than you. So maybe that's how we can just start talking about like. A little bit more about how and and like how, yeah. <laughs> well, we go oh, give us the secret, George. Yeah. We all okay, want so <laughs> I think the secret is forty. So we need to know this. The, the secret is there is no secret, and um, it's just it, it's the daily habits that we keep that allow us to do whatever we want to do in our life. It's the everyday things, not the big things. So um, Jack LaLanne, who I'm sure everybody's familiar with, you know, he's one of my um, idols as far as the way he lived his life. And he used to say that he would go to the gym every day to recapture his youth. <clears throat> and I tell that to myself. And when I get out of bed early every morning to train, um, I think of Alexander the Great. It said that he used to say every morning he would get up in the dark before any of his troops were up. He never wanted his troops to see him sleeping. And he used to say, I will leap from my cot while failure sleeps yet another hour. So those are a couple of the, <laughs> the things that I think about early in the morning that motivate me to go train. And I just like the feeling of being fit. I keep my body fat, you know, um, low. I like to feel fast. Um, I've had all kinds of orthopedic surgeries. And because of my commitment to fitness, I've been able to bounce back from everything without any uh, impairment. I've had both my knees, ACL reconstructions, stem cell treatments twice, orthos orthoscopic treatments twice. I've had a bicep detached and reattached, a shoulder reconstructed. I have an ankle I broke four times and had to have it reconstructed. So it's not that I've been unscathed in my sport, but I've come back and been able to get to the high level again every time because of the daily habits of um, right. eating consistently, doing food prep, just the basics, and then spending that time in the gym, both cardio training as well as weight training. So then how does, so like Jen, I know you talk about overtraining. So it sounds like he does a great job with recovery, but how do you feel about, I feel like to get to a certain level athletically and to, to win championships, there is a little bit of quote unquote overtraining that has to come into play. Jen, do you agree with that or? Yeah. I mean, it depends on the athlete. You know, a lot of athletes, it's very hard to um, avoid getting injured. I mean, people like George play to win. They're not yeah, exactly. going to be like, oh, are my knees in neutral position? Am yeah. I turning my hips out? Like that's not <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there is a component to wear and tear on the joints, especially with the professional sports that can't be avoided. Yeah. But when we talk about overtraining for the general population, that could be avoided. Right. Um, you know, a lot of people, especially with people who want to lose weight, they're always about, you know, how many times am I going to get to the gym? And they, you know, some people go from nothing to too much volume all at once you know, where they're just, let's say, running too much or, you know, going into extreme ranges of motion that their body can't handle and not getting proper recovery in mm -hmm. between bouts of activity. Mm -hmm. So they end up hurting their joints, their ligaments. Um, and then even some people mentally overtrain because they put so much pressure on themselves to lose weight or, you know, to keep up with their friends who've been exercising for many years. So it, it's finding that fine line so that we're not on either ends of the extremes where we're under training or over training. And if your goal is to be a pro athlete like George, then, you know, obviously you want to work with a professional who's going to help you train accordingly so that you don't get hurt as easily. Well, so, so since we're on the topic, I guess we'll stay a little bit on this on this subject um, before um, asking a couple other other things I wanted to backtrack a bit. But I guess when it when it comes to overtraining, kind of, I guess, overload is a, a concept in fitness that's kind of necessary to make progress. Um, where, I guess, where's the line between kind of overload and overtraining? And what, you know, what should people that are just kind of the normal person looking to get fit, um, what kinds of things should they, should they look out for to identify maybe some of the symptoms or, or, or signs of, of being overtrained? Oh, you were asking me, right? Yes. Oh, okay, very cool. 
Um, well, so if you're talking about the general population, like, you know, if you have a lot of fatigue, if you're in pain, if you feel burnt out or you start to get sick or if things feel inflammatory, those are probably the simplest symptoms to look for. Um, so, and you should really pay attention to that because the goal is to never overtrain. But overload, I think that's a very subjective question because a lot of people can definitely lift more resistance, for example, or push a little bit harder cardiovascularly. But if it's at a point where you're in pain and, you know, you're so out of breath, you're ready to faint or vomit, you know, those types of things are a great way to say, hey, I need to scale back a little bit. I'm not quite there yet. And that's okay. Um, and then there's going to be variables that play into your programming from day to day, even when you are fit. You know, if let's just say you have a little virus, if let's just say you didn't sleep well, you're not hydrated enough um, hormonally for the ladies, if you're, you know, at your peak during, you know, for your menses, like things like that are going to impact how we perform. So I, I think we got to get back to the basics of understanding, okay, check in with myself. Maybe during cardio, I wear a heart rate monitor. Um, and maybe during my lifting, I have a basic goal of not being able to um, do an extra repetition. And therefore, I know to go higher on my resistance, for example. So ever since I, I could remember, I've heard this slogan, and, and Ryan and I have talked about it a lot. In fact, I remember in one of our very, very early episodes, we talked about how this is sort of a, a little bit of a loaded statement, a, lo a loaded slogan. And it's no pain, no gain. And everyone says it's important to train hard, you know, no pain, no gain, which we're starting to think maybe that's not actually the case, um, depending on how far you take it. But how do you reconcile this concept of you need to train hard, you need to push yourself with the fact, the concept that we can overtrain as well? Yeah, I, I think we need to change it to like no discomfort, no adaptation, something mm, like that. Good. Yeah, because I, 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 I and George, I want you to go from a uh, you know a pro athlete standpoint. Um, but but you know the the thing that people really need to start doing is go based on exercise science. You know, cardiovascularly, wear a heart rate monitor, get a VO two max test done, and train based on those numbers. Because if you do high intensity interval training and you're going higher than your peak heart rate, for example you're not going to get more fit by going higher on your heart rate. So if you understand your actual numbers, then that you're going to be training with a lot of education behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and with strength training, you know, if you're very new to training, then I recommend you hire a qualified personal trainer who's got excellent credentials, such as a certification that's a nationally acclaimed certification or a degree in kinesiology or exercise science, for example, so that you could ultimately understand proper loading of your body without overtraining your tissue. Cool. So, so um, I wanted to backtrack a little bit. Um, how did you guys meet each other? Yeah, I'll go ahead and field that, Jen. Uh, I, I think um, when, when Jay-Z talks about seeking out people that can guide you in this process of fitness nutrition, um, helping you understand the line between over and under training, or what good pain and bad pain, to differentiate, to differentiate those two, I sought out Jen for advice um, originally just in my overall health in um, testing me and finding out where I was and then recommendations for um, nutrition going forward and also how I was going to exercise and continue to hit goals. And then I got reacquainted with Jen four or five years later when I wanted to follow up because I, I was altering my diet and wanted to get more information from her, her uh, professional opinion about what I could do to keep, you know, improving my fitness level from the dietary end. Mm -hmm. And so then we started the discussion about our lives and what our passions were and realized there was a lot of alignment there that we both felt um, like we wanted to inspire people. And we could, we were coming at it from different life experiences, but both wanted to do the same thing, create a, an audience of people that wanted to make progress in these areas that were our passions and um, create a format where we could have a voice and we could collaborate. And um, so we just dove in and started these podcasts and podcasts. And it's been a wonderful experience. 
Cool. So I guess tell us about the podcast. Like, what's the what's your what's your goal? What's the what's the kind of is there like a niche that you cater to? Um, you know, kind of give us some, some insight into kind of that, that process and what what your your hopes and and you know, the experience has been so far. Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> so by the way, they call me Jay Z. That's my initials, of course. So, um, so you know, George is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to self-development and when he brought me back on his team with nutrition as he just mentioned he mentioned to me that he really wanted to spread his word because he does a lot of self-help for himself and he's proven large dividends of success and i told him you know you would be great at going out there and presenting however you know to get your name out there it's best to start out with a podcast and you know, let people follow you that way and grow your name, grow your following. And then eventually, you know, get out into the masses because people are going to want to, you know, meet him in person. Um, You know, so I was just really amazed by his background and the fact that he's so into athletics and just, you know, having a purpose. So really, you know, what are these podcasts about is no matter where you're at in your journey, if let's just say there's a goal that you have in mind or you've been struggling with something or you don't know where to start, the goal is to really listen to our podcast and realize that you could start wherever you're at. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter where you're at with your career. All it matters is that you do the work. And, you know, George is constantly quoting different references because, you know, he really figured out people that he wants to, um, you know, follow in their journeys and, you know, not really reinvent the wheel, but basically replicate things that have already succeeded for them. So, you know, we, we have a lot of great content in our podcast. And, you know, if I could say so myself as a shameless plug. Um, but, you know, we're both very successful at what we do. And I don't think there's a need to keep that all a secret. We just love sharing and we love seeing other people succeed as well. Cool. So now... Um I don't know if you're big podcast listeners um, or if you listen to many fitness podcasts, but is there something that you feel like maybe differentiates yourself from other kind of maybe health, wellness, fitness, you know, podcasts in that realm? Is there something that you feel like you, you really kind of separates you guys or your approach to, to your standard podcast? Uh, I'll interject something, Jay-Z. Yes, I, I, yeah. think, I think, first of all, um, as far as, being able to price in your physical progress with the rest of your life, I think that is a unique skill set and that we can shed light on that area. So for people that are super active in a professional career, raising a family, maybe uh, intensely involved in a sport, and at the same time trying to keep themselves physically in an optimal state, um, learning proper time management, how to frame things, how to calendar things, and how to be able to coordinate success in multiple areas all simultaneously. And uh, I feel that's something that I have experience in. So, for example, what my life looks like right now, I, I own and operate um, a pretty large cattle ranch. I have about 300 head of cattle. I live on that ranch. On the weekends, I'm on horseback doing ranch work. I also operate heavy equipment. I own three bulldozers because it's mountain country up by Yosemite National Park. And I've cleared 100 acres of brush by myself on these mountain slopes just in my spare time. I've, I've taken this, well, about 900 acres of property and made it look like a park, which was just choked with brush. But in the process, I've rolled my bulldozers down the mountain multiple times. I, I shouldn't be here. I'm the cat with nine lives that's extended that concept. And I've progressed in my rodeo career all at the same time. I've built a multi-million dollar revenue business, which affords me any lifestyle that I choose and be able to kind of do and move on this earth with the financial freedom that uh, once was just a dream for me. And I'm very, feel very overwhelmingly blessed with my financial success and the team I've got put together in business and at the same time being able to progress with my training and have that as a pursuit. So maybe that's unique, I think, in helping people to see how they they don't have to sacrifice their nutrition and fitness um, along the way to achieve success in other areas. There's There's a process that you can learn to follow that will work in multiple areas at one time. And uh, that's what I feel like I have to share. And I know there are people that have inspired me. 
when you see somebody do something that you want to do, that instills faith that you might be able to do that, right? right. That's yeah, what I've sure. always felt like. In fact, the big inhibitor for most of us is just believing that we can. If we're struggling financially and we want to have millions in the bank, even no matter how bad we want that, do we really believe we can do that? That's the question we keep asking ourselves, right? Are we really capable? What makes me think I can do that when my history says I can't? Or nobody in my family ever has done anything like that. Well, if you have people, you have um, mentors in your life or people that show you the way. They've been from your point A to your point B. And you can attach yourself to their life example. That gives you inspiration and faith and helps you along your journey. I've had so many of those people that I've benefited from that I have this drive to return the favor. And anybody out there that wants to go where I've been blessed to go, gosh, I want to inspire them. That would be very fulfilling to me. And, and so that's kind of where I'm at. I think we have a unique ability to reach that group that feel like they don't have time to have optimal health and fitness in pursuit of their other things. And we can show them how to do it all at once. And then also my age band, being in my 50s and being able to continue to progress in spite of the aging process and navigating that. Um, I think there's a lot of people that get to that point in life, their 40s or their 50s, where they feel like, well, if I didn't get it done, I guess I'm not getting it done. Or it's time to back off as opposed to using our experience to be more powerful, more productive, and more accomplishing than ever. And I want to be one of those voices that says, as long as you're living, you should have a dream that you're chasing. That having something that motivates and compels you in your life is what makes life wonderful. And we don't have to use age excuditis. We, we don't have to <laughs> limit ourselves because we've been on planet Earth a certain number of years. Yeah, we have to keep educating and modifying and learning as we age. But it can be a progressive thing and not a digressive thing. And so I also want to be one of those voices. And I know Jen does as well. She's a rock star, you know, at 40 years old, just had her first baby. Um, she's <laughs> incredible. You know, we just, we're, we're, we're operating on two different age demographics, but we're moving in the same way, trying to prove the same point. How's that? Yeah. Can I add to that, guys? Sure. So thank you, George, for the plug. I, I appreciate that. Um, so we also, um, what differentiates us mainly is when you listen to these podcasts and they are really good, like I have some really good podcasts that I listen to and I'm like, oh my gosh, but because I do a lot of private coaching, a lot of what I find is people walk away from some of these podcasts saying, well, how do I do more of that? So for example, how do I become more spiritual without being religious? You know, we had one episode on fit because that, you know, focused on spirituality um, we also had one on forgiving, you know, forgiveness, um, one on gratitude, one on vulnerability. And that's all we focus our episode on so that we can really dive deep into these things that people really want to learn more about and how to initiate doing that and being in that so that that can be part of their healing or part of their journey to excellence. Awesome. Um, so I so I had a question for you, Jen. I, I've seen in your, in your book and on your website you talk about uh, ch breaking the chains of obesity, and you also mentioned your kind of work with um, with children dealing with obesity. So I guess my question is, um, it kind of what do you mean by breaking the chains? Because um, it's kind of a, a powerful phrase. And you know, what are some important things for people to kind of identify if they're if they're dealing with it, kind of if they're kind of in, enveloped in the in the chains of, of obesity? Right. Yeah. So breaking the chains of obesity, um, epigenetics is the study of our genes. And I actually have the obesity gene. So breaking the chain is, you know, I physically um, and physiologically broke the chains of my genetic disposition for being obese myself. Now, I've been 25 pounds heavier than what I am currently. And ironically, being a pregnant lady not too long ago, it was a very interesting phenomenon to see that when you change your lifestyle, you actually turn off the genetic expression associated with whatever disease you have. And I was shocked beyond belief that I only gained 20 pounds in my pregnancy and I lost all 20 pounds within six days. 
And I just, I feel like I'm living proof that anybody who's struggling with weight and who really wants to become a lean person can do it. But it really takes consistency, perseverance, and it takes humbling yourself that for some people, it's a much longer time frame than what we'd like. So if people have a lot of weight to lose, instead of succumbing to the fact that, you know, they have the obesity gene too, you can be healthy because I've done it. I've helped a lot of people do it, but it's not easy. It's challenging. Um, And, you know, the book is a toolbox of how to make that happen and how to step by step you know, keep it off once you get to your goal weight. Um, no, the, oh, I'm sorry. Were you, were you still? Nope. Oh, no. So, so I guess, um, a question is, um, it, do you, you know, how much of it is, you know, obviously there's a genetic component, but, um, how much is the kind of psychological part of, of that? Like how much, how, how involved is that in, in your kind of process of dealing with a client that, that maybe, you know, needs to break that because there, there seems to be such, such a big part of it is, you're dealing with willpower and dealing with um, self-control and self-esteem, and um, you know. So, how do you kind of approach that aspect of it? You know, in, you know, in addition to kind of changing the lifestyle um, habits of, of the person that's yeah. dealing with it. I'm really gr- glad you're asking that question because, as a lean person, and if you guys are lean as well, it's very easy to look at somebody who struggles with weight to think that they don't possess willpower and um, self-esteem and all that stuff. Some people legitimately have, um, and you know, obesity has been diagnosed as a disease as of 2008, I believe. It's literally an underlying issue that's not so easy. Uh, as saying somebody doesn't possess the willpower. There's, you know, neurotransmitters involved. There's biochemistry involved. There's so many different cellular things that people have to fight against that it it takes a trained professional to actually help them navigate, you know, from that initiation process to staying in it to win it. Um, It's not just diet. It's not just getting them to the gym. Some people legitimately need medication some people need surgery. I mean, I'm not saying everybody who's overweight needs this, but you know, if anybody has been struggling for many, many years and you have over 100 pounds to lose, for example, you definitely want to consult somebody, a qualified somebody who can help you with the right initiation process instead of buying diet pills and you know, paying a lot of money to people in my industry who don't really have the right credentials to work with you. Um, You know, I actually went back for my credential as an obesity specialist because I really wanted to understand why my family is so overweight and why they struggle to this day uh, because everybody in my family except for me, my sister, and my brother are very overweight. So, you know, it's not to say that they don't want to change. It's just it's not easy. So I think the very first step for those people is to go to a trained professional and, you know, see what you need to do. And from there, just, you know, assign yourself a certain time frame where you can measure your success and, you know, keep your results very realistic to start. Uh, so, yeah, I guess uh, so, question based on this then. Let's, so let's say you, you, we have a listener that or, you know, any number of listeners that might be overweight or, or obese and dealing with um, dealing with this problem. Would the recommendation then be to, to do some form of genetic testing to see, like first initially to see if they have the gene, um, to then steer the right approach, or like what kind of professional would you advise somebody to go to initially? So you know, let's say just they're dealing with obesity, but they're not sure whether they have the gene or not. Would you recommend like what who who what type of professional should they go to? Yeah, there are a, a lot of genetic tests out there actually that they can get done. Twenty One and Me is a great one. Um, A doctor I work with, his name is Dr. Chavez. He's in Fresno. He's actually a trained medical professional in obesity. So somebody like him knows how to handle um, somebody who struggles with weight. And obesity doesn't necessarily have to be the issue. It could be somebody struggling with, you know, 25 pounds and higher or even 15 pounds and higher. As long as you have too much body fat, okay, shifting ourselves away from just the number on the scale, Body fat is the most inflammatory organ that we could have in our body, and it, you want to get rid of it as, as you know, as best as you possibly can, even if it takes time, because you know every single disease stems from inflammation. So you want to go to somebody who has an obesity credential because they understand the cellular issues associated with you know what you're dealing with. Okay, and they could also reach out to me too, and I can veer them in the right direction based on where they live too, if they have questions. Where are you from? You said New York, right? 
I'm originally from New York, but I reside in Los Angeles. So, I have a question about obesity in sort of in the eyes of America or in the eyes of the, of the world, really, and how the media might murky the waters. On, on one side, you have television shows like The Biggest Loser, which show an approach to fighting obesity, and then you have social media movements such as the anti-fat shaming, where oftentimes you'll hear, oh, embrace how you look. Right, without necessarily the concerns of how healthy it is. What do you make of, of the role that the media sort of plays in sort of this sort of obesity epidemic that we have in, have in the States, and which, as we've mentioned before, is expanding in the, throughout the world? George, you want to jump in on that one? I could st- uh, add to that as well, or? Yeah, I mean, I... I you're probably more qualified opinion, but I would just say that from my that um, pe- people want to feel a certain way. You know, it, it's not how you look; it's your life experience and the way that you feel, and the amount of energy that you're able to bring to whatever's important to you. And so, when you're obese um, or you're battling, you know, with a very overweight, conditioned body, um, that just makes life like. I'm certainly not being critical of people that choose not to get better in that area, but we do know it limits, you know, your quality of life and certainly um, invites a lot of degenerative disease into your life, which I don't think anybody signs up for. So um, I know that I know this movement towards just embracing your body and loving your body, and I think that would be true in any area of our life. We need to be grateful for where we are and not just beat ourselves up all the time. But we want to be empowered to be our best self, right? That's kind of what life's about. It's a progressive thing. If we are moving forward in any area, including our physical health, we are happy and excited. If we're going backwards, we're not happy and excited no matter where we are. Nobody likes digressing. So I would just say for a happier human family – We need to get a handle on this. If a third of America is obese, we need to get a handle on that. And we need lots of voices of encouragement, not to shame people, but encouraging them that they don't have to live that way. And part of that's the education process, and part of that is the positive encouragement process. So it is mental and it is physical. Jay-Z? Yeah. No, that's a really good answer. I think that whole social media of not fat shaming people is – a really good beginning because I think that we started transitioning away from just the individual. And what I would like to see happen is more healthier messages out there, which we are long away from. So you're constantly seeing commercials that show you the most unhealthy food. Um, You're constantly passing billboards. Like the healthy industry is really not um, loud enough at this point. So unfortunately for someone like me, for example, when I see these messages of, you know, an ice cream sundae, it's like, even though I'm a very lean person, there's a, a, a point in my brain that gets stimulated. And, you know, cause I also have the gene associated with what's called eating disinhibition. And that means I get excited when I see foods that I grew up on, you know, it stimulates those neurotransmitters associated with pleasure. So I I think that, yeah, it's nice that we're trying to involve everybody. You know, I know that there's a big push to involve all races and create equality no matter, you know, um, you know, what sex you like and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, when it comes to your health, you know, in, in a perfect world, I want everybody to be healthy and I want everybody to know no matter how many times you feel like you failed at, you know, various diets or various exercise programs. There is a way for you, and that's why going to the right professional and asking them where to start is probably the first step to knowing you're going in a new direction for yourself. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So, I guess, where can uh, people find you? Like, tell us, tell people like your podcast, uh, any social media that you guys use, website. Like, where can people get in touch with you and hear you? So um, we have a website, fitbecause.com, and on there it links to George's website as well as mine, which is jzfitness.com. That's my initials, J as in Jen, Z as in Zerling. 
And um, for social media, we have Fit Because on all platforms. And then I can be found at Jay-Z Fitness Nutrition um, on Instagram. Twitter is just Jay-Z Fitness as well as Facebook. And, and George, how can we find you? Is, do you have a sp- your own stuff or do you uh, prefer to sort of be reached uh, with yeah, the through, through the fit because just because my industry is uh, heavily regulated and gotcha, so gotcha. I can't talk to a general audience without a bunch of disclosure. So, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. So, so, George, tell us, tell us one crazy story from owning a, a cattle ranch. Tell us something crazy oh. that happened to you or that you witnessed. Because it's so foreign to us. We live in the city. Actually, I was up on a dairy farm recently and it was awesome. I loved it. Got to hang out with the cows and whatnot, but still very yeah, important to me. So I want to hear a crazy story. Okay, well, uh, I have lots of them, <laughs> but in, in, I guess to give you a visual, because our ranch is really steep and um, mountainous, everything has to be done horseback because you can't like get a four wheel drive or a quad up and down those mountains without rolling and injuring yourself. You certainly can't handle cattle with a anything mechanized we everything's old school like it was done 200 years ago in the cattle business so i have a partner he's originally from australia and we became friends in the rodeo business we're both saddle bronc riders i invited him to come when i bought this ranch in 2005 to come up and help me run it so we partner on the cattle and when i'm here at my day job he's up there taking care of business on the ranch and then we get together and as far as you know, crazy things that uh, have happened because it's steep, and especially in the winter time when we're having rains and it's muddy. You have horses fall down and roll down mounds. I had this one horse. I, this is this the story that comes to mind. That it's hard to pick one in particular. I had one horse that I had bought. He's two years old, and he'd never been in the mountains. So there's a lot for him to think about and try to negotiate the first day on the job. And it was in, in the wintertime, I think it was in February, and we were moving cattle out of one area of the ranch to the other. And I was traversing on the side of a mountain on a little cow trail that the cattle had worn, but it was real muddy. And I knew this horse had never been in a situation like that. So I was prepared if he went down and fell down and started rolling down the mountain that I'd step off of him without injuring myself, kind of thinking that could happen. So... Sure enough, he starts to panic and slip, and I was able to step off of him just as he starts to fall down, and then he rolls down this mountain probably 10 times, revolutions, Mm. and he starts rolling, you know, sideways, and then eventually his horse body turns north and south, and now he's going what we call ass over tea kettle, right? He's Mm. actually head to tail, head to tail, rolling down the mountain. He gets to the bottom of the mountain, there's a a creek bed, and he gets caught between two rocks. So he's upside down, like a a turtle flipped upside down in his shell. He didn't know how to right himself, and I know he was totally in a state of shock. I worked my way down to him, helped kind of position him to where he could get to his feet, and he got up, and he was in shock the rest of the day. And, And then he started paying more attention to his surroundings. But we have those type of things happen all the time so yeah it's never boring (laughs) (laughs) to say the least (laughs) well guys thank you so much for coming on the gym wits this was fantastic you guys have been great thank you for inviting us it's been great absolutely and we'll have to uh i'm you know i've just recently learned about your podcast so i'm looking forward to to listening to it awesome thank you again Thanks. All right, guys. Well, in, enjoy the um, you know enjoy the, the the weather out in Cali. It's awful, awful here in New York. And we have this joke where pretty much every episode we complain about we complain about the weather. So we're going to do it again. <laughs> uh, that's why I relocated, boys. <laughs> I think I'm going to follow you soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm heading out there soon enough. All right. Well, awesome let us know when you're in town. Okay. <laughs> awesome. We'll do. Uh, Thanks, you guys. Right, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. Thanks again. Take care. Thanks. So that was really interesting because Jen mentioned about gene expression and there's a lot of new studies and research supporting nutrigenomics and I feel like that's a whole topic we could totally delve into and I'd love to do a podcast episode about that to (laughs) talk more about that. Um, I guess the one question I guess I would have for you, um, now knowing that that you know a bit about it, 
is it a is it kind of just a fledgling field or is there enough out there to really kind of say with certainty you know this is whatever like that that it's useful that it's effective that people should be following programs based on it or are we still kind of in a preliminary pro- i wouldn't okay. follow programs based off of it and i don't know how like they're gonna feel about me saying that um it's more of just like i mean at the end of the day we have to change our lifestyle yeah. so to spend time on trying to figure out which genes are being expressed at what time and like that shouldn't dictate whether you should start eating vegetables and exercising regularly um yeah. maybe in the future but right now this you know the sunny the science is there yeah um it, i just i wouldn't waste my time going even to a doctor to figure out what genes are being expressed or not to be honest i really and, just think yeah. that you know we, at the end of the day we know what we need to be doing um and we need we need coach and we need coaching we need accountability we need help from the right pr- professionals um but I just I just feel like at the end of the day you're gonna have to take the same steps. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it sounds like it's something that that uh, down the road they'll be. There's some like here's one thing, and let's kind of jumping into what we could talk about. But like there are certain things that are showing like some people do better on like high fat diets, mm-hmm. some people do on high protein, some people do better on like higher carb. Like that's part of nutrigenomics. So like yeah. learning more about that. So then yeah, maybe you could argue you could follow okay. a nutrition program yeah. based off of it. Um, but it's still relatively new. It, it, it seems like a funny selling point that I'm hearing for all these, you know, 23andMe and uh, all those things. I actually did that. And did you know that I am 15% Middle Eastern North African? I have no uh, clue uh, how. Why not? I, I don't know anyone. There's no one in my... The 15, uh, uh, 15% is a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where where's the rest where are your parents from your parents so from, from I mean, where's your ancestors from they're they're all eastern europe and italy okay I, I mean that's far that's far enough south that you know in your that, that you there's no reason why th- i mean i just don't know of anyone that's in there well you don't know of anyone but this is your ancestors i mean this is going back a long time it's not that ancestry because well no but you don't the right know word. the 15 percent sure not. why not, not? Like, Point. All it takes is a couple of people to have inter, you know intermixed not too long down the road. Not, even if, even if you long. have a couple generations back, you do the math, and it's oh, actually no, 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 not I know. a couple generations. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know anyone a couple. Well, generations. you don't know, but that doesn't yeah, mean it doesn't know. exist. Yeah, well, I mean, well so, and then you dispute the the results. So you're basically no, no, saying no, no. You, I, or, I believe that. Okay, so that's genetics. I do think it's kind of funny. <laughs> back to the whole. Um, do you follow a, a plan based on your genetics? I, I, they mention that in the ads all the time. Well, it turns out that it the high cholesterol. Runs in my family. Well, great. Good to know. You could have figured that out by che- checking your cholesterol. So eat healthy. Right. right? Well, no, I think I don't. I, that's not no, fair. No. Because no, no, no. <laughs> clearly, like there are, you know, if you have a genetic predisposition to that, there are certain things you're gonna need. You, you'd right. Know, you're gonna right? Yeah. monitor more of your your <laughs> fat. Like yeah, definitely. I mean, it is important to know what runs in your family. Yeah. So you can prevent certain. Things. Yeah, and, and I, I think I think it's an area that that we, you know, I think in t- in twenty years. Um, well, it'll be a different world as far as you know, how we do do interact with our, our with that knowledge of, of what our of our genes and our genetic history mm-hmm. and and what we can do. It's a little scary, you know, especially with what how science develops and what we're able to change and turn on and turn off and get to express and not. To, you know, that's a little scary. So, what are um, you gonna do? What do you guys when they figure out how to ch- tamper and change our genes to change stuff? What what are, what are you gonna do? With I want to fly. Change? No, but they can't do that because there's no genes that can make you fly. Okay. So ba- based on normal human traits, what are you going to have them change about you? I want to be a super athlete. All right. So that you want to have super athletic genes. Okay. Yes. What about you, Tom? Oh, God. Mm. Oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm definitely going to have them reverse the gene that makes me lose my hair, and I want to be black. Or at least this. <laughs> You're not happy with 15%? You were just complaining about that. Look, I, I want to I be more mixed. Maybe more. So I would like to be able to get a nicer tan. Like, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, would, I, would, See, I want to be like, I want to be I like, a, I want to be like a good, like 36%. I think that would be like, Really not. I would have like really nice skin tone. <laughs> I guess if you're in New York, it's it's it, it, it's it's okay. But, but yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't change it. But you'll definitely get a different experience. What was that? Okay. That Chris Chris Rock a long time ago did this. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll leave it at that. But um, been a long day. Huh? Yeah, it's been a very a very long day. <laughs> 
Like, yeah, you, you, you definitely, your interactions with cops might be a little bit different. <laughs> well, look, we're, 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 we're talking about the future here, so I'm yeah. hoping that oh, like we're, we're perfect 20 society, or 30 where, yeah. years that those issues don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, okay. Wishful Good luck with that. Do you remember the great line from the movie Bullard? Bullard? Yes. The, it's funny that we were thinking the same exact thing. <laughs> it's one of my favorite lines yeah, it's, in any it's movie a great ever. movie. No, all right. What's well, the line, Ryan? Uh, God. Well, we can't, we can't say it unless we want to get kicked out. Well, of you can like, say it without using the expletive. Uh, what was it? Let's just all F until each other until... So you don't remember the line? I, I do. Remember, I remember the until, gist of it. Until we're the same. It's, 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 let's just all f each other until we're the same colors. Basically. That was the gist oh. of it. Yes, I don't I know no, it I word for word. Okay, maybe it is. I don't know. All right. Look, sorry. <laughs> this is all us. Right, this is us after like five hours of of, of a marathon recording. Um, so we apologize for for just rambling and talking about random movies that <laughs> I hope we've seen. Bullworth. I haven't thought about Bullworth in. Until this time, very sad. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'm signing off for five weeks, although you won't know. Um, well, how come? Don't worry about that. Uh, I'm Ryan George. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm just, I'm Forever mystery. <laughs> Chef Sonic reminding you that truth does not sell. I'm Tony Marinucci, a registered dietitian, aka Tips with Tony, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. And I'm not going to jail, just in case we keep hinting at me going away. And it's like, is he going away to jail? <laughs> <laughs> not that. No, we are the Jimwits. Jim